Hi everyone, Rob here from Power Learning Solutions. Uh, today what I want to talk about is something that I've received a lot of questions about recently from some of my students and that's how do I provide the video feedback that I frequently give them. For paper-based assignments, uh, essay papers, research papers, that sort of thing, I typically don't use video to provide feedback. I provide a lot of text-based feedback as comments in their essays. However, for some types of assignments, such as uh, major course projects, web-based projects, video assignments, I do like to provide them with some video-based feedback. A tool that I use for that is Screencast-O-Matic. I do use the Pro version, but there is a free version available, which has some limitations, but it's still a nice little tool. Now, I'm using a different tool to record my screen right now because I haven't figured out a way to use Screencast-O-Matic to record myself starting up and using Screencast-O-Matic. But uh, I will show you what all that looks like in just a second. The first thing I need to do is to make sure that I have my documents ready that I plan to review for my students. So I have a folder set up here, Video Feedback Tutorial, which mimics the structure that I use for my folders when I'm grading assignments. I have my uh, student submissions uh, in one folder. I have a folder for saving my feedback rubrics in and another folder for saving the video files that I record. So I've already got a rubric open here and I have a, uh, an S a sample of this assignment open. There is an essay part to this, but this is a major course project uh, in this assignment where I had them design a unit plan. So I figured it would be much easier to provide some video based feedback on this. So the first thing I've done is look through this paper to make sure that um, I know it, what it is that I want to talk about, what feedback that I want to give. And I've gone through this in enough detail that I was actually able to fill out the grading rubric ahead of time. This one is for sample student. This is sample students paper. Once I've done that, I've got a space left here where I can put a link to the video that I'm going to record for this student. Okay, so now I want to start up my video uh, software, Screencast-O-Matic. Double click on this. It will open up Screencast-O-Matic for me. You can see I've got some uh, video feedback that I've provided to some students in the past little while. But I'm going to start a new video. So I will hit record and make sure that my options are selected the way that I want them. So I do want to record both my webcam and my screen, not just one or the other. The reason I do that is because I like students to see my face when I'm providing them with some feedback. Uh, it helps to personalize things a bit. Uh, a lot of times I'm providing this feedback to students who I am teaching in online courses, so I don't get a chance to meet with them face to face to discuss this. I've uh, already selected my screen. I'm recording this entire screen. And I've turned off my computer audio. The reason I do that is because I don't want to get any annoying uh, system notifications, uh, dinging, any email notifications, things like that, dinging and, and interrupting the feedback that I'm giving to my students. You also have to have your mic that you plan on using connected before you start up the software or it's not going to pick up your mic. I prefer to use a headset mic, as you can see myself uh, using in the little window down here, because the uh, headset mic gets uh, better audio and I don't get any feedback from my speakers. So I'm going to hit record, and it's going to give me a countdown. And now I am ready to record this video for my, uh, for my students. So I will bring up the uh, assignment that I want to give some feedback on. And I can talk about whatever it is that I need to talk about. Maybe their APA formatting is off. So I give them a, a few pointers on how to correct the APA formatting. I talk about the content uh, in, in the first parts here. And I focus on the main part of the assignment. You'll notice that in the Screencast-O-Matic version of this uh, video that I'm recording, that uh, you can see my cursor. You can turn that on or off in the Screencast video editor. You can make that decision after the fact when you're editing. So now I've gone through this, I've provided my feedback to my students, I will stop the Screencast-O-Matic video. And I can edit the video, but in this case I'm going to save it at this point. And I'll come back into this and do a little bit of uh, further editing in a few moments. So to save it, I need to pick the folder that I want. I've already picked my video feedback folder, which is my subfolder here. And I will give this file a name that I can recognize. This was sample students, uh, and this was assignment two. So I will 
give it a name that's easy to recognize, A2 sample student. And I hit publish and it is going to save this video for me. Okay, so I have my video saved for sample student now, and I want to do some post editing on it just to make sure that everything is ready to go to provide this video to my student. So in Screencast-O-Matic, I can find my video here, open it up and hit on edit. And there are lots of neat things that I can do in here. I can uh, trim the beginning and the end if there's extra time on here. I can trim out bits if I need to. I don't really need to worry about that when I'm providing video feedback to students, though, because I prefer to actually uh, have it sound a little bit more natural. So unless there's any major flubs or if somebody walked behind the camera on me or something like that, I, I tend not to do too much post editing on feedback videos, a little bit different when we're talking about uh, creating tutorial videos and I want to piece a few pieces together. So if I want to trim a couple seconds off the end, I can just put my cursor there and hit cut and I can drag the little bit that I want to cut out. Easy enough to do. Uh, nice feature that I like about this is that uh, you actually have the ability to insert closed captions into any Screencast-O-Matic videos that you're creating and it can do that with uh, speech-to-text so I just start the speech-to-text engine here it is going to uh, generate text based on my speech for me and I would need to go and uh, double check all of this text here sometimes you need to add in your punctuation change the spelling of a few words but it's it's pretty good at actually picking up uh, at least for me it's pretty good at picking up my speech and getting that accurate for me so I'm gonna hit cancel on this here now I'm not gonna provide closed captions to this particular student but if I was going to create a tutorial video, then I would make sure that I include co closed captions. And if I was going to uh, provide video feedback to a student who I knew had a, uh, a hearing impairment or some other issue where they needed the uh, closed captions, then I would definitely go ahead and do that. If you provide this video feedback using Screencast-O-Matic to your students and uh, they don't... Uh, let you know in advance but you find out after the fact that they would like uh, some closed captions in there you can always go back and re-edit your video and save it out again now the next step once I have my video done and I've already saved this video so I'm not going to bother republishing it once I have a2 sample student done I need to share this with a student now you can upload this to Screencast-O-Matic itself and give them the link, but I find the easiest way for myself is just to use Google Drive. I have a dedicated folder set up here. All I need to do is uh, upload the MP4 file. And it takes just a moment to upload this file. Done. I, I grab the uh, shareable link, make sure link sharing is turned on. The uh, link is copied. I go back to my rubric for my student, paste in the URL, save this rubric as a PDF for them, and I will save that under the rubrics folder here. So this is sample student. And now all I need to do once this PDF is ready to go is go into the uh, learning management system or whatever means that I'm using, maybe it's by email, and find this rubric, upload it along with the grade for the student, and they have instant access to your video feedback.